The image was striking. The president of Georgia, his nation reeling from a military incursion by Russian troops, stands defiantly on the main square in the capital, Tbilisi, calling on the world to defend his country. At his side, the leaders of four former Soviet republics, Ukraine, Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, and the former Soviet bloc nation of Poland, who've had their own run-ins with Moscow. You Georgians, stay united. United, you win. But Georgia's army was no match for Russian forces, in spite of a vastly increased Georgian military budget and training by U.S. military advisors. And some of Russia's smaller neighbors are drawing big conclusions from Russia's victory. Could Moscow try to do the same thing to them? The U.S. Defense Secretary is stoking that fire. I think that the Russians' um, further message uh, was to all of the parts of the former Soviet Union as a signal uh, about trying to integrate with the West and, and move outside of uh, the uh, long-time um, Russian sphere of influence. Moscow scoffs at that idea. We have no plans to throw down any leadership. That is not part of our culture, part of our foreign policy. It is not what we do. But Russia's foreign minister is dropping strong hints that Moscow would recognize the independence of Georgia's breakaway regions no matter what Georgia's president, Mikhail Saakashvili, thinks. De facto, De facto, right now, neither the South Ossetians nor the Abkhazians want to live in the same country with the man who sent his troops against them. Rep Even as ceasefire negotiations continued in Georgia's capital, Moscow's tanks were still prowling the Western Front. At first, their target was this, the vital Georgian seaport of Polti, outside the pro-Russian breakaway region of Abkhazia. Though thought to have been under Russian occupation, Poti's docks have remained open, and the Russian soldiers seem to have left the city largely untouched. However, they have sunk five Georgian Navy and Coast Guard vessels, and as we speak, just behind this wall, a small element of Russian troops and armoured vehicles is in control of this part of the harbour, loading inflatable boats onto trucks. Locals say the troops arrived early in the conflict. Their presence quickly followed by bombing, which led to a number of civilian and Georgian military deaths and casualties. Life appears to be returning to normal here in Polti. However, residents say the Russians are conducting occasional patrols in their armoured vehicles. But as quickly as they began, those patrols have ended. Georgian officials claiming the Russians have just pulled out of the city. But the Russians haven't gone far. The troops at the port were in fact just one small element of a much larger force, which is now digging in 30 kilometres from the Black Sea coast outside of the town of Sanaki, deep within undisputed Georgian territory. Vehicles line the area's roadways. And in this field, what appears to be bushes is actually Russian artillery, masked by fresh-cut foliage. From those positions, these oil tanks in nearby Polti and the railways that carry the oil remain at the Russians' mercy. And they will stay that way until Moscow brings these troops home. Michael Ware, CNN, Polti. Oh. Turkish journalists come under fire as they drive through South Ossetia. A Georgian TV correspondent reporting live, hit by shrapnel. Journalists run for cover as a man in uniform, force unknown, steals equipment and threatens a cameraman. Telling the world about the sudden war in Georgia has been dangerous and for some journalists, deadly. We've uh, recorded three journalists killed in the space of a week and more than ten injured, which is a very high toll indeed. But in a, in a sense, it's not uh, completely surprising given the fluidity of the lines in Georgia. Julian Mannion of British network ITN was driving toward the South Ossetian capital from an area controlled by Georgian forces when his car was shot at. That's the hole left by one of the bullets that was fired at us just about half a mile down the road behind me. 
We're still hearing sporadic gunfire. Cal Perry, who's worked for CNN in Iraq and Lebanon and is now in Tbilisi, says there's one element in Georgia that's especially alarming. The biggest security issue that worries me in this conflict is it seems like there's no law and order once you get outside Tbilisi. I mean, it seems like there are gang... Uh, sort of armed groups running around. We've heard reports that many of them are drunk, waving weapons in the air. Most journalists try to balance risk with a desire, even determination, to get the story. But striking that balance is often a guessing game, and sometimes the story has to come second. There are certain areas we simply cannot get to because they won't let us pass the checkpoints. There are certain areas like Gori where we don't want to go, where there have been numerous crews uh, carjacked at gunpoint. Last Tuesday in Gori, Dutch cameraman Stan Storymans, a 20-year veteran of combat zones, was killed in a grenade or bomb explosion. Several others also died. Dutch reporter Jeroen Ackermans was lucky to escape with his life, and an Israeli journalist was badly wounded. ITN team went into South Ossetia in the back of a Russian armored personnel carrier. These Turkish journalists did not, and as they drove from the Russian border through Skinvali, they came under a torrent of gunfire. Their car was no protection. One was shot in the head, and his injuries are not life-threatening. Someone just as lucky Tamar Urashadzi wasn't wearing a flak jacket when she was nicked by shrapnel. She did put one on immediately afterward. Even if a ceasefire takes hold in Georgia, it'll be just one less place where journalists are vulnerable. Hollandeli operatori ki gorshiara tetsuis khazi aramet tetsuis chetwati shemdeg mogles. Journalist e birusuli tetsuis na obis mir da bombil kalak shima shemdeg shavidne. Hat president ma medvedev ma tetsuis ganu akhre bo obis piro badado. This is what happens when you drive towards the Russian army. A Turkish TV crew drive from Georgia up the perilous road to Singvali in South Ossetia on Sunday. They don't know who's shooting at them. It could be the Russians who've just taken the city ahead of them, or it could be local militia. Press, they shout, and one of the journalists starts praying. He frantically rings for help. Using their T-shirts as bandages, they get out of the car. Ambulance, they cry. But the men who shot at them, who appear to be in Russian uniform, aren't there to offer help. It's the welcome you might expect from many nervous advancing armies. But the Turkish crew said they were roughed up, interrogated in Russia, and arrived back in Turkey yesterday. Today, Washington issued its toughest condemnation of Russia yet. A contentious relationship with Russia is not in America's interest. And a contentious relationship with America is not in Russia's interest. With its actions in recent days, Russia has damaged its credibility and its relations with the nations of the free world. Bullying and intimidation are not acceptable ways to conduct foreign policy in the 21st century. Bullying that helped Washington get its way Poland finally agreeing to be part of a U.S. missile defense shield that's always irked Moscow. The deployment of missile defense forces in Europe is targeted against the Russian Federation, and its timing is deliberate. The tales about deterring some other rogue states do not work. One has to admit, though, that the decision has brought about no calm. It's unlikely that Ossetians and Abkhazians will be able to live with Georgians in one state. Further condemnation of Russian tactics. Human Rights Watch saying this attack on Gori in Monday used cluster bombs. It killed many civilians, including a Dutch journalist. And today, Russian tanks still sat here in and around Gori and the western port of Poti even as U.S. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice flew in to offer a show of support 
and try and get this ceasefire signed. With the signature of the Georgian president on this ceasefire accord, all Russian troops and any irregular and paramilitary forces that entered with them must leave immediately. Promises of humanitarian aid to rebuild Russia's tiny, battered neighbor. But for some, that was too little, too late from the West. Never ever will Georgia reconcile with occupation of even one square kilometer of its sovereign territory.